Hello everyone, I'm Jesus and welcome to the next episode of The Road to Old School MTG. In this video I have for you round one of the September Strike Old School Magic Atlantic Tournament held at Dave's Time Warp in Cedar Grove, New Jersey on September 2024. Uh, I face off here against a mono green weenie deck and I have a Urnum Genin deck or Bantam Genin deck, which is the same thing, but it just adds blue for dips and for blue power. So this is the deck I anticipate to take to Lobster Con. And before we start anything, let's start with the deck tech section. This is a version of the deck that I took for last year's Lobster Con, which was my first Lobster Con. So the previous year I took a Bantam Geddon deck, which is just Urnum Geddon, but with blue for dips and blue power. And I was recently have been trying to play robots for a few months now. But since I have so many cards that I need to borrow, plus I anticipate robots is going to be one of the top decks and a lot of people are going to be sideboarding a lot of cards against it. I figured I would play something different, right? And then with such short notice, I figured this is the best way to go because after last look I had updated this deck to, uh, to combat the three main cards that I felt uh, really hindered me in last year's Lobster Con. So this is now a really good opportunity to kind of redeem myself even more and see if those changes actually translate in more wins this time. So the three cards I had difficulty with were Blood Moon, Sitting in a Bottle, and The Abyss. So for Blood Moon, I have added six basic lands here. So I have four planes, a force, and an island, which is which are the three colors of this deck. So now, uh, last year, when I've lost games strictly because of Blood, uh, Blood Moon, it dropped, I couldn't cast anything, and I lost. So since then, I have played against decks that have Blood Moon with this version, and the basic lands definitely make a huge uh, difference, and now that's not an out, out of loss for me. And e I can even play around it. So I feel like it's a lot more resilient now. The second card, Sit in a Bottle. The previous version of this deck had 13 cards that were susceptible to Sit in a Bottle. So I had four Dibs, four Urnams, four uh, City of Brasses, and a Library of Alexander, right? So that one card would take out almost a fourth of my deck. So now this version, I've trimmed the Dibs and the Urnams to three each only. And those two extra uh, creature slots are put into Juggernauts. And then I have no more City of Brasses and I don't have a law. So now that uh, a City uh, in a Bottle will only take out six cards from me. And of course, with my four Disenchants in the sideboard, I think I'm also, I can play around it. So it's uh, before I would like, it would be such, it would make such a big difference uh, in terms of the impact the City in a Bottle had. Uh, like I basically lost because of it. But now I am able to get around it more. So it's not like I'm immune to it entirely for me to be immune, to be totally immune. I would have to have no Arabian Nights cards, right? So, but I'm a lot less susceptible to it. I can work around it more and it's not an auto loss kind of like it, it was last year. And then for the Abyss, that one, uh, since I put in two Juggernauts, that does help a bit. But honestly, that one is just, um, there's, uh, I have four disenchants. I don't know if I have four disenchants last year. I don't think I did. So I do have all four disenchants in the main. So uh, just off the bat, I think I'm able to deal with it more because of that. But I do have uh, three tranquilities in the cyborg. So uh, the cyborg definitely is. Uh, I am looking to play around with it. So the cyborg, the deck, I would say is built. I'm not gonna play around with it. The cyborg, I'm definitely going to still debating, and I'm going to be debating until the very last second. Uh, so the cyborg you see here is is different than the cyborg I took from last year, and is different than what you see now to what I'm going to end up with taking. Right. So the sandstorms, actually, the opponent that I'm playing now is going to be a mono green Winnie deck. So 
I have specifically put sandstorms in thinking about that particular um, deck. So now you'll see it in action and then you'll see the results. Tranquility hits a lot of different things. It's also, of course, the Abyss. So uh, I do anticipate taking uh, probably maybe two Tranquilities, maybe three, we'll see, right? So, but right now I am high on Tranquilities in terms of me including them in the sideboard. Other than that, this is a regular, very aggressive deck, uh, a good uh, mana curve of one, two, three, four, five drop creatures. Uh, a lot of disruption, Fortis and Chance, Swords, uh, Armageddon's of course, a Balance, and uh, also to kind of add like a second Armageddon, I have the Factors, and like I said, also I have now six basic lands. I had to do a lot of playing around, and also the land count is higher this time around. Before, I, I, I remember I had exactly 20 lands. Now I have 22, which of course includes the six basic lands. So I feel this is going to be a, this, deals with a lot of the issues I had from last year and I'm am very uh, hopeful that I'll have a better record this year with of course with some luck involved as well like usual all right so now we can go into the games I'm on the left opponents on the right opponent took one mulligan opponent seems like he's going first so sorry for the glare I'll try to keep track so forest and a uh, scavenger folk. So uh, the upper right side of my opponent is just happened to hit a, some a, a light source there. So only in that area of his playmat do you see some glare. So me planes and mocks. So that's a cool altar uh, one of my friends made for me. Let's see if any of you guys know what it references. So it's just so I unfortunately didn't get a force or something. So, so I could um, attack. Uh, 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 get a creature out. So, my opponent sacrifices folk to destroy my mox, and then he casts another folk, uh, scavenger folk. I so during my turn, I just play tropical island. If I had that um, mox, maybe I could have cast a turn to dip. Opponent goes, he plays a factory, he pumps with the pendle haven that he had brought from last turn, so that's two damage for me. So now Going into my turn three. So I bring out my own factory. And then I pass. All right, so I had a slow start that Mox would have helped me out a lot, but my opponent was wise enough to destroy it. So now he can come in for four, folk, pump, and then the factory but then he'll doubt tap his resources if he has another okay seems like that's what he's going for tap attacking okay i have something going on oh nice i got a disenchant on the factory i take one only and then my opponent doesn't doesn't pump because he cast a scoop sprite so here now i have four mana Okay, Ernam. So if I had that Max, I would have been able to cast that Ernam the previous turn, and then my opponent may wouldn't have attacked. Because if I, you know, if I get the the curve nicely, definitely I could have a creature every turn. But in this in this round right now, is, uh, in this game, it's not happening, right? This is the first creature I'm casting turn four. So my opponent's attacking with the sprite, flying, no pumps, just one damage, I'm at 16. He's tapping two, so notice he's not playing a lot of lands, so he, so he has a Chaos Orb. Because these kind of decks are low on lands, because they want to, first of all, they're winning decks, right? So they only need one or two lands to operate. And then they prefer to have all that to the extra cards for more creatures. So. That token is the forest walk that Ernam gave the sprite. Ooh, I get a second Ernam. I attacked, hit him for 16, so we're both at, hit him for four, we're both at 16 right now. So now my opponent goes. So now I'm getting the upper hand. His factory is destroyed. I still have my factory. So far, I'm just using the factory for mana. Okay, so he's, uh, okay, he's using the orb for, my, yeah, I was telling him like he was about to flip with <laughs> this pendulum. 
Right. So he's getting my untapped Urnum. Nice flip. So then he can come in for an attack if he wants. So he might be thinking, okay, right now we're same life, but he might hit me first and then I'll be lower initially, right? So he may be tempted to attack, hit me for two or three. Okay, so just for two, no pumps he needs the mana for a elf so now i go oh i get a second factor so that's good because now i can maybe attack with that factory for now i'm just attacking with the urnum the sprite still gets the forest walk because of course it's flying anyway so i couldn't block it either way so i do want that second white sword so i can potentially cast a sarah so five mana Oh, my mistake, I do have the white sword, yeah, from the altar. It didn't, didn't seem like it was a, a planes, but yeah, that's a planes. So there we go. So nice. So two Urnums and then a Sarah. So that's a that's a pretty strong um, succession of creatures. And now I have something to t to block the Pixies, but of course it has Forest Work, and I can, still can be blocked. So my opponent terror my... Ernam, he took a damage from the Elsa Deep Shadow to get the black mana. Necessary for that. But I still got the Sarah. He could have attacked with the Pixie still. Because it has Forest Walk. Or at least that's that's the last turn and it has Forest Walk. It no longer has Forest, forest Walk. So here I'm coming in for an attack. He blocks and and Giant Growth, but before the Giant Growth, in, in response to the Giant Growth, I swords it, so then I get a two for one basically. So he only gains one life because I swords in in response, but it was already blocked, so he doesn't get hit. But I still have I was able to swords and then get a two for one, and then still have the mana open for a juggernaut. So this is going really good for me. Plus my opponent only gain one life out of that exchange as opposed to four. Yes, two lands only, so me destroying that factory seems like uh, it impacted other things. Okay, so he gets a crumble. He didn't want to do that because... Okay, so I was a 14. Yeah, I got to hit a higher up. He would have preferred not to do that because, right, um, this is going to make it harder for him to win this game by crumbling my creature, but... He only has two creatures out right now. He has no defenses for the flyer. And then he didn't want to deal with the Juggernaut as well. So. so here, okay, this is good because I have the... Okay. So yeah, so I was thinking, okay, do I come in with the Sarah and the... And the uh, factories? Or do I just go wider? So I figured, okay, I'm just going to go wider, cast the two weenies. Lions and Pixies, and then on the next turn, I might come in for a five creature attack. Okay, so here I'm debating, okay, do I activate both factories and then attack with everything? He blocks two land creatures, so I could potentially win. But if he has some kind of shenanigans, maybe a giant for something. So I figure, okay, let me just, you know, I got the upper hand. He's playing green, so there's nothing that he can do really. And I said, okay, just let me come in for the, for the, with the Sarah, and then the following turn I can go wider, and then that'll definitely guarantee me a win. Um, but not necessary. Uh, he took the four, and then he was not, he didn't draw anything that was going to stop my attack in the following turn. So I get the first round. Going into game two. I have a mole, but then we start. So forest, I'll try to keep track. That's a pixie, uh, no, no, it's script sprite. My go, I go with a factory and a soul ring, right? So I could have dropped a different land, I'm sure, but I just want the factory to be available to attack in the following turn. Ooh, he gets a... Uh, so, in the previous game, he also uh, was able to stop my ramp. 
and then he's doing the same thing here so he crumbled my soul ring i gained one life but then i took the damage anyway so he had a and he also plays a bat by you i believe that's what that dual line is called the two lines that I don't own, I keep mixing up their names since I have very very little experience with them. Okay, so he plays a... Ooh, nice. He plays a factory and then he... Um, ice storms my... He ice storms my Savannah. I use the mana to activate the factory just in case. But he was, you know, didn't really do anything. He and then he attacks with the script right, which is flying. Okay, so here we go. So I play uh, another Savannah, I play a Mox, and then I come in for an attack with the factor. So I still have one white open. So either I have a swords or I'm bluffing that I have swords. So he, my opponent plays a maze. He still has got the script right, so he can still come in and attack. Yeah, there I just take it. So yeah, that glitter out card is a script spread. He plays a scavenger folk, which is tricky. He can definitely destroy my mox again, or he can even destroy my factory if I activate it. So if I still have the soul ring and the second savannah, I would have the creature by this turn the turn that just passed from so this um, ramp denial is definitely affecting okay so here let's see okay do I have something lands okay I do see a land so sometimes I might it may take me a while to know which land to play because I'm, I'm anticipating I'm going to um, Armageddon. So in this case, I played a, a Black Lotus, popped it for white, and I was able to cast a Sarah. I think I see a Tropical Island in my hand, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know why I didn't play it. Maybe I also have an Armageddon. Or, you know, like, if, basically, if I don't need to play I, a land, I won't. So. So right now I have three mana open. So if I get an Urnum, let's say, if I draw an Urnum, then I'll play that land, that fourth land. But basically I want to, I prefer to cast Moxes. So that way when I do a, an Armageddon, uh, I still have Moxes out in play and I didn't have to sacrifice so many lands because I could have kept some in my hand. Okay, so that's the Demonic Tutor, I believe. Right, so yeah, opponent's tutoring for a card. So he's green. Oh no, green and black, my mistake. So green with a splash of black. So he may be bringing in a terror, maybe. Uh, may he, I mean, he has the Maze of it, right? So I can't even attack at the moment. Maybe a Chaos Orb, uh, or did he already play it? Was it this turn or last? Well, you know, I mean, right now he's he's not super worried about the Sarah Angel, right? With his Maze, that's fine. But I believe he did. He does know that this my deck is an and I'm getting it right. So he has to think. Maybe that maze won't last for long. Okay, so here I play a land. So I have four mana now. I play a lion. And that's it. So I could have definitely used... So I, I guess... I wanted to have wide open for a source or a disenchant, right? Because he tutor for something. And I don't know what it could be. So it could be definitely a mind twist. We'll see. So yeah, terror. All right, so yeah, that's what he terror. So right now in this game, I have a 
Only two creatures, uh, Sarah and then a uh, lion. My opponent attacked with the pixies. I hit me for one. Okay, so yeah, those lions do something, but I can't come in for an attack first. So he has a maze, plus he has a factory that he can pump to 3 3 blocker. So not the best. Okay, I think did my opponent play a land, whatever. But either way, he's tapping two green. Okay, Thurvish. Tax for one. Flying, which I cannot block, 16, right? So that Dervish I'm not too afraid of. I do have my creatures and also a factory that could block. It. But if he starts going wider, then yeah. And of course, he does have his own factory, right? So he could attack. This is can be tricky because he can attack. I can block and then he can choose to maze his own attacker. So that way he doesn't lose a guy in the attacks. But at least uh, right now, I played a second factory, right? So that's good, but then he matches me with his own second factory. All right, so the two glared out cards out the way at the end, two fours, and then the scavenger folk. So he's attacking with the skip sprite. If I'm not mistaken, I, I believe I had a sword or something. I don't know if I have it currently. I'll see, I'll see if I can get a look at my hand, but I know I was debating, okay, do I kill that skip spread? Do I kill it? Do I kill it? So it's just one damage. It ended up hitting me for quite a bit. So I don't know what point I already had the swords or not, but I know I could have um, destroyed it sooner. So I have, I don't only have Saros, but I have three dips as well, right? So I have a couple of flyers. So I was hopeful I would get one of them instead, or I would get a big creature and then attack and then force my opponent not to attack me in retaliation because then he needs his creatures open for defense. But now with the maze and then two factories, that's gonna be, even if I get an Urnum, that's not gonna be the best. Actually, I would need two big creatures, right? Because he has a maze, one Urnum is not gonna do anything. Right, he's activating the factory. He's coming in for an attack with the factory and a sprite. So, I believe I played uh, one factory, so I'm activating one, the one that I already had in play, so that it, it can pump itself. Ooh, okay, so he's, so I animated one, he uses his folk to destroy it, in, in response I animate the other, and I use the one that's about to die to pump the other one, so the other one's a 3-3, and then he pumps his attacker with the second, so then uh, I only get hit for one from the sprite, and then I destroy one of his factories, but then he also destroyed two of mine, right? So, at least, I, at least I got something out of it. And dealing with one factory is way better than dealing with two. Okay, nice. Chaos Orb, that's good for me. I can... This, the maze is probably the thing that I'm worried about i had two factories though now this is trickier i got i do have the chaos Orb, though, right? so that's helpful so you can still continue to attack me in the in the air with the sprite until i get that some kind of a blocker or i just decide i finally decide to have enough and towards the sprite, but for now I'm just taking it. I'm at 13. Just tapping two more for then a second. Ooh, so this is trickier. So now he can attack, come with a wide attack, and then probably one of the dervishes will be able to get tokens. And then he won't have to sacrifice one because he could just maze the one that gets blocked. So this is good for him. He's in a good spot here. So he plays a Mox Emerald. That's the one that's totally cleared out at the moment. So he, at least this, right? He's not getting anything huge. Okay, here I get an Ancestral, let's see. If I don't do anything, I think this is the one of the places where I got all lands. Okay, now that's what's happening. Pixies? Okay, I was tapping too, so I'm thinking I have a Pixies or something. 
Yep. So I, I wanted to keep white open. Well, actually, they all make white. I think I wanted to keep. Uh, maybe I wanted to play two pixies because I want. They seem like I, I need an additional green, but of course, which I didn't have. All right, so pixie. So I'm matching him for now, but he's still in a superior position because he's because of that maze. Oh, now he gets his own orb. So this is important. Well, yeah, I let it. I let it stay. So I could have reacted before the orb came into play. I think this was a mistake. So my opponent attacking with the because now I can choose to orb, but then he can choose to res respond to the orb by destroying my or orb first. So I think that was a mistake, especially since that maze is so pro uh, problematic for me. I should have destroyed it as his orb was coming into play. So now I'm tapping one. So yeah, I activate it. But then in response, he act, just like I feared, he activated. So yeah, he's he's destroying my orb because he's he knows I want to destroy his maze or something like that. And then he doesn't miss. So yeah, that that's a blunder for me. I should have because you see, I activated it to destroy one of his things anyway. And then if he activated, he would have just hit you know one of my weenies or whatever. So yeah, that was a mistake. I could have destroyed either the maze or the factory. I would have probably gone for the maze. So that was a mistake. Okay, so I play a land, have five mana open, four. Okay, so okay, now I get an Urnum. So it's still gonna be tricky coming in. But at least definitely better than before, because before he had two factors also but that maze is still going to be pro uh, problematic for me and you see look at that pixies i mean his script sprite is done over five damage definitely all on its own okay so that's a uh, land over elf he's tapping two forests Ooh, he's been he was holding up he he played there we go he played that um, city in the bottom. So, like I said uh, previously, I'm you know I'm definitely more resilient to it, but it doesn't mean I'm immune to it. I still need that disenchant. I think I had, I, if I'm not mistaken, when he played this, uh, and then I started drawing uh, dibs or maybe an urnum. But basically, like, you know, like I wasn't getting too many big creatures, and now after he did this, I was starting to get it. And then, of course, I cannot even play them, and they just stayed in my hand. So that's why this second game here is so long. Because, um, you know, we're just both getting a little unlucky, but also now with the sin in a bottle, it's just going to prevent me from playing uh, the good stuff, If even if I draw it. And now that Pixie... It's still coming in and now i know i'm not gonna get a dip to block that pixie so and i'm below 10 now so he just cast a another elf so he has two land or else in that glared out section all right my turn and then that makes it still active so oh man sorry for the shaking a little bit uh, the table that we're on, it's just a long classic table, so, and there's other players playing in the same table, right? So, between everybody playing, the table being a little flimsy, things move around. Oh, nice. So, I do play a balance here. So, I have three creatures, my opponent has five. I have four lands, my opponent has one, two, three, four, six or seven lands. So, definitely, I'm coming up ahead except maybe in cards I do have to sacrifice quite a bit of cards in hand okay so yeah he had to destroy one one land that's not a big deal and now he has to destroy creatures I think here I'm thinking about I believe I'm thinking what cards I'm gonna discard so pixies oh really and two lands so I have five cards in hand and he only has two so I just got two lands, so you see how I'm keeping the lands in hand if I don't need them, if I don't need to play them because of 
Armageddon's that I anticipate on drawing. All right, so he's whoa, he's sacking both. Um, he sacked both um, whirling dervishes and kept the scorp sprite and the land of war elves. So okay, there we go. You see. Ooh, sandstorm. So there we go. So I th I thought I was um a source, but actually I had that sandstorm for quite a while. Maybe because he wasn't trying to bum rush me, right? So getting a big white attack. But then after I destroyed it, I'm like, okay. Then he just cast the second one right after. Okay, so now I get my own factor here. I'm trying to do some math here. So with that factory, I could come in for four attack. But even if he takes the whole thing, I'm at nine. He's at eighteen, so he's doubled the life of me. Uh, so he can definitely get hit for eight, and then he can come in for a counter attack. His counter attack could be one, two, three, five. But if he gets a Pendlehaven and then a Giant Grove, I'm dead. So yeah, he said I choose not to attack. And then he still has that flyer that's coming in. Yeah, that pixie I think is done. Close to ten damage. Okay, so three. What am I doing? Oh, okay, Juggernaut. Okay, that's something. So that could help. If I if I could come in for a white attack, but I really can't, because he's so high up that he can just absorb the attack, and then get me under counter attack. Especially now that he has now another factor. He came in attacking me for the dip again. I'm at seven. Place a third land of war elf. So he has four creatures out. I have three. So he's no oh no four creatures. But he has two factors. I got one right. So he's definitely could bum rush me. Soon, even if he ends up sacrificing a lot of the creatures, but this is how Green Winnie operates, right? You have to accept those losses because the uh, the damage is worth it. So I have to attack with the Juggernaut, so he just misses it. You could definitely sacrifice one of the factories to block pump itself get rid of the juggernaut but i mean the maze is doing the work for him and i'm at six now so i guess my opponent figures he's gonna win through the pixies anyway with the sitting the bottle out i cannot cast any of my dibs and then i only have two saros in the whole deck i already played one of so the second saros is the only thing that could block that pixies and then of course hopefully i get a Swords or something. So I attack again. He mazed. So he forgot to untap his pixies as an attack did. Yeah. There we go. Swords. He gains one life. Oh, he's at 19. I'm at 6. I'm sure it's too easy. Ooh, strips my factory, so he can definitely come in white, but oh, he doesn't. I attack, my turn, I attack, he blocks, I mean, he maces. Okay, second juggernaut, okay, but I mean, I'm pretty low on life. Okay, so he only has one mace, I got two juggernauts. Oh, he just passes, alright. I mean, I'm not out of this game, definitely. I wonder if... I'm pretty sure that bottle is doing something. I believe I remember that it was so like I said, I'm more resilient to it. So I'm still doing stuff, right? So I still got the, I got two juggernauts, right? Normally th that would have been another dip and another urnum. So that's the changes I made is definitely proving the correct decision, but is but definitely, you know, be more resilient doesn't mean um like it's totally you know not an issue anymore it still very much is all right so he, he sacrificed one factory pump itself to block 
one of the juggernauts because he knows he couldn't he could only maze one at a time right so he had to do something about the second one but now he we're back to the status quo that we were had before where he can just keep amazing the single juggernaut i have okay so these whirling dervishes maybe came from the sideboard uh you know i'm not really the protection from black doesn't do much actually anything against me maybe he just wanted more creatures out to flood the board more or maybe he just had him in the whole time and i just didn't steal him game one. all right so here i'm coming in he makes the juggernaut and i pass so i remember yeah this game was definitely very long the second one and just in general the first game was also kind of long but you see that's why it's so long like we're we're in a standoff we have equal amount of retort of creatures out so so something has to happen okay so oof, he's playing another ice storm to destroy my um my factory again so honestly i'm th looking for that armor again i know i have some lands that i'm keeping in my hand right that armor again will get rid of his um factory and his maze right which is which would be a big help he's he, he would still be able to cast because he had casting he has three land or else out and play so he wouldn't stop his progression but he's not doing much anyway right just because he's just not getting particularly strong things but but i just noticed the forest in his hand so he's anticipating that armageddon for me as well tapping three okay so spitting slug so this is to better deal with the weenies the weenies that i had uh, we would have traded with his weenies but now he done that's no longer the case okay so i cast a third line but i mean it's not doing anything i'm just casting creatures because i don't want him to get bomb rushed by his creatures and you know it's not like it's gonna totally prevent it but you know at least makes him think twice all right so he's looking through his graveyard so he must have gotten a regrowth or maybe he got a demonic tutor in his here then makes me realize okay you know how many flyers because i need flyers now so i can get it over that's 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 what i'm hopeful all right so so yeah he regrowed what can he get back Ooh, I think he's getting a tutor. Yep, he's re regrowing for a tutor. <laughs> he cast a tutor. So I'm at six life. He's, you know, he does have black, right? So, but he doesn't have much black mana, so. But I think you know what green has that can deal direct damage, or at least you know, deal. It's an X spell that does damage to a players. So, so yeah, so he must. So you would. This is I'm so low, and he has enough mana. He could get a um, hurricane, right? So can see he didn't play anything last turn because he didn't he needed the mana to cast enough add X enough of it. So I needed to destroy do an arm again in the the turn that just passed. But I just draw and and, and once and there it is. Yep. He tutored for that. Um Hurricane for six. That kills me. I and I didn't have a swords. Cause that's the only thing i could have saved him then i could have sourced one of um, the juggernaut that i had to bring myself up uh and not die but it didn't happen and my opponent was able to overcome that pretty intense deadlock there all right going into game three one more for my opponent i played tropical island 
mugs. Two moxes, turn one dip. All right, so this is very strong. Of course, you can get a land mox and then um, sit in a bottle. So he went Bayou and Lanora. If I took a damage, I attack with three. I'm at 19 to 17. I play another island. I, I play another mock. Oh no, I, play, I tap the mox for a pearl for a seven alliance. So I have four mana, so this is strong. If I had that earned them, that would have been way better. But uh, maybe I didn't play on purpose because I'm a little afraid. All right, so he, he gets a forest and then a spitting slug. So then that's good for him because then that's preventing me from attacking the lion as well. So the two glittered out cards that he has on his side is a Bayou and a Lanora. Ooh, so here it is. So I do cast that armor again and then I play. So I attack, he's at 14. So right now I do have the upper hand. I have a land and two moxes. He had an elf, but not. But I, did, I was hopeful, praying that he didn't have a land in hand. Maybe he didn't and then he just top decked that right now. But I was, and he only killed two lands and he killed two lands. So it was even, but I figured I have the upper hand with the creature. Or, you know, slightly, but enough. And I had a landing that I played right after the Armageddon. All right, so, but he's responding pretty well. And then he's playing a sprite. I take a damage. He attacked with the spinning slug as well. So that's two damage extra on my 15. He's at 14. So previously where he, I was ahead in life. Now he's turning the table. Okay, so, yep. Yeah. So I'm attacking with the lion and the dip. I do three damage to him. Because I'm definitely happy to sacrifice my line for his flying script spray. Alright, two taps two for a warning dervish. He attacks with the. So here we're even, because he hits me for two with the spinning slide, but I hit myself for one from my dip. So we're hitting each other for three. So we're even. So something has to happen to break the deadlock, but he has more creatures. So he can definitely get me lower now. Then I was getting hit, and now he has a pendle him, so forget it. Yeah, with that pendle him, he's going all out. So here's where, like, oh, do I have a sandstorm again? But even if I do, right, so with the pendle haven, I would wait until he pumps. And if he doesn't pump, then it's too late for me. So he didn't pump. I think I had a sandstorm here, and then I chose not to pass because I was. I was waiting for the pump. So yeah, that was, yeah. I don't know if I did to have a sense of that, but right now it's really tight. I'm coming in for attack. I'm trying to map this out so that way, because yeah, this is very close. So his, that particular dervish got a counter, so he's a 2-2 now. So at least it can be pumped with the gun heaven. Okay, he's looking at his graveyard again, so he must have drawn a regrowth or something, or maybe, now tutor. All right, so, it's, yep, all out. So that's a uh, land over off all the way in the corner to layer it out. All right, so yeah, I'm blocking. Yeah, so I'm just saying, okay, what are you blocking, right? Because once damage is declared, you know, they all deal damage except for first strike, right? So I'm saying, okay, are you going to pump or not? So I'm giving him the opportunity because maybe I have a sword, right? Depending on which one he wants to pump. I may want to do something else. So he is pumping his land or out. So he has two one ones. So if I had if I had that sense, this is the perfect time. I could have destroyed two creatures and made him waste his Pendlehaven activation. But yeah. So I swords. He gains one life only from from that. Those two creatures die, but I take three. And then he, his other dervish is not going to get a token. And then he really grows. What is he going to get? Okay. So yeah, get a flyer to do that last bit of damage. So I'm at three. And then he can attack me for three. Okay, nice. I get a factory out. So he's at three now. 
So I'm thinking, okay, I block his his service with yeah, because yeah, I block that. I took one, but okay, he's yeah, but then he fend the haven, and then I took the one that missed on my upkeep. So yeah. I, either way, I think that made that um, dervish already <laughs> should have had a counter on it. But either way, whether it was a 2-2, two -two, it became a 2-2 two -two anyway with the Pendle Haven. And he got me. So it was right right down to the wire. But my opponent got the win. All right, going back to my deck. So I did get, that, I did get to play that Sandstorm. But in this particular time I played it, I only got one creature out of it, right? So because... Uh, so as much as I like the sand, sandstorm idea and kind of getting two or three creatures all for the price of one card, I would have to be very in a very bad position for that to happen, right? Or I would have to purposely not play things out so that way my opponent thinks, you know, I'm, you know, I'm dead in the water and I'm a sitting duck and then he could He's more tempted to play out his whole hand and then get a big to get bigger attack before I can, you know, drop more creatures as defenders. So basically, it requires setup. It's not like, oh, I get, I have a sandstorm now. I'm gonna destroy two, three, three, three creatures immediately. It ended up just being a one for one, kind of like a swords. Uh, so, and I, I'm so I had three sandstorms. I'm sure I put all three right. So. In games two and three, I only got, I only drew it one time, and it just, um, it ended up being a one for one uh, swap. So, I like the idea, but in the end, in, in the execution, it's not there. And um, I'll see if I get more experience with Sandstorm. But right now, it's looking like it's, you know, like the idea is there, but when it comes to actually executing it and you know actually applying it to an in-game situation basically i would have to be losing for sandstorm to be effective and i'm not going to purposely make myself lose just to make sandstorm more effective or at least normally i wouldn't right so it's not like that's not something i could i could never do definitely i could similar to uh the armageddon right so i know i could I have the potential to play an Armageddon since I have two in the deck, even balance. So I purposely don't play out all my lands. So knowing I have a Sandstorm, I may purposely decide to, you know, get take some early hits just so that my Sandstorm can get um, become more effective by surprise. Um, so you know, it's not out of the question, but. You know, it's very extremely situational where, you know, only if he has like a few one ones, okay, maybe I might. I'm willing to take a few hits just to set up the sensor. But he, if he has uh, seven alliance and then pixies, right? So those creatures deal two damage, right? So e even though I'm tempted like to hold off on the sandstorm, I'm like, okay, turn one, I'm taking two. Second turn, I'm taking four. You know, the turn after that, you know, like I'm already at around 10. So yeah, so I really wanted to work similar to previously. I, I had a, in my X points deck, mono black deck, I had Hellfire. I really wanted to make that card work. And in my mind, I, I like, okay, I've made this deck in a nice way so that this card can shine. It just was not the case. And then in this one, I'm like, okay, Sandstorm can come in against Green Weenie, and that's exactly the main reason why I put Sandstorm, against Green Weenie. Because that's the one I fear the most, more than like Goblins or White Weenie. So this was the this was the time Sandstorm needed to shine, and it just, it didn't. Oh well, so uh, I lost this one 1-2. One, but it was a very hard fought games, as you saw. So, uh, even though, of course, I'm a little sad I lost, uh, it's if I had to lose, this is a nice way to do it because it was a hell 
of a match. Thank you guys for watching.